What's going on, everyone? Welcome to the uh, fifth, yeah, I think this is the fifth, um, part of our uh, Photoshop for web developer series. This time around, we're going to be working with layers um, and some of the information that goes along with that. Um, Photoshop is, or PSDs are, are great um, resources because it's essentially an image with uh, stacked layers. Um, and so we can um, we can use that to show and hide what we need, but also easily move components of our of our uh, image so that uh, we can customize it to our needs if, if the the need arises. So we're going to jump into our Photoshop file, and the first thing I'm going to show you how to do is is essentially to how to navigate around the uh, your layers. Now I'm afraid this may be a little bit hard to see, but we'll uh, we'll make the best of things. I'm going to double click on um, on the lay on the window tabs to minimize them, and so um, from here uh, we have a large number of folders or groups. Um, and if you click on the arrow on them, it's going to expand and show um, its children. And on the left side of it, uh, you'll notice that there's a little eye. If you click that, it's going to show and hide that layer. Um, so a lot of the times, um, you may be provided a PSD where there's a lot of hidden layers. Sometimes some uh, a component will be start uh, will be started, but may not work out the way they want. And so sometimes they may just hide it instead of deleting it in case they come back and change their minds again. So um, if you ever work inside of a PSD, this is why I recommend you keep a, a plain copy of it in case you accidentally show something that's not supposed to be there anymore. You always have that original one to fall back to. So um, just going to expand out a couple of these, um, and so uh, kind of so that we can kind of see uh, the structure of this. So on our featured one, uh, our features which we were working with last time. Um, they're named fairly uh, intuitively. Uh, we have item four, we have item three, which I turned into a smart object. Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, maybe it was, uh, I don't know how that got there. Um, we have item one, item two. Um, inside of there we have the actual text behind it, uh, the actual icon. So let's, uh, let's, let's work inside of these for a little bit. Um, so I'm going to actually I'm I'm going to go up to the top one uh, our POV section. Um, we're going to look at a layer's blending options. So if you actually if you select out a layer and so right here we have add lovely captions and stuff. And on the right side of the layer, you'll notice that there's a little bit there's a FX um, uh, text. Now what this means is that there are blending options associated with this layer. Um, and so if you click the, the arrow on the right hand side it will open and collapse them. Um, you can specifically go in and look at these by clicking uh, by right clicking and selecting blending options. So from here we can see all sorts of different fun ways of manipulating a layer. Um, so the ones that are currently here are drop shadow which is creates that nice little shadow effect to the text and then color overlay this is creates an extremely misleading um, uh, misleading uh, look to a PSD sometimes uh, a lot of times so for instance if we use our text tool select this text open up our character window you'll see that our color is actually um, our the hex color is actually 3d 3737 but if we go into uh, but it's obviously not that color it's 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 white so if we go into our blending options, we, we can see the uh, way to override it. Um, so um, from here we can we could change it to whatever we like. We can change it to red. Um, we can also change the opacity, which um, essentially goes straight back to um, the original color. Um, so anyway, uh, these are just a few of the um, uh, blending options you'll typically see inside of a PSD. Um, there's there's um, inner glow, outer glow, um, gradient overlay is, is also a, a common one. Um, to kind of see how this works, um, you'll need to. I mean, let's see. Okay, uh, to see how 
a gradient um, goes from one color to another. You essentially click inside of the gradient um, bar and then you can click on uh, each one of these arrows to see the location of it and what color it is and you can use this information to plug into an HTML5 or CSS3 gradient generator. There's a lot of them out there that are built to match Photoshop so it's real easy to do. Uh, what else do we have? We have pattern overlays, which I typically never work with. Um, stroke is kind of a is a, is a, is kind of a, just another uh, popular text um, piece, and I'm sure there's plenty of other um, uses for this. But inside of our web world, it's it's I I don't see it very often. So to kind of jump outside of um, styles, let's uh, let's kind of look back at our color overlay. And so um, while we're looking at this, there's there's one tool we've I've kind of overlooked in our previous series, and it's the eyedropper tool. And so if you're ever stuck in a situation where you don't feel like opening up blending options or not sure exactly what color you're looking at, you can click uh, your eyedropper, which is over on the left hand left hand side of our screen with all the other tools um, and simply click around um, to um, to get the color of what um, is below the cursor that's going to show up on the bottom left hand side of the toolbar um, and uh, what we'll typically use inside of our uh, CSS is the hex value which is on the bottom um, and uh, of see fun thing too that I also just recently found out if you right click instead of left click with it you can copy the the, the color as uh, a hex from there instead of actually having to open up the uh, text or open up the the color piece and so um, from there you can uh, get your pound sign f 9 f c 6 3 f um, then also you can get the uh, hex code oh I'm sorry it was you can you can either get the hex code or the HTML totally outdated. Um, well, that that's the CSS property, so that's that's one way to do it too. So anyway, um, that is our eyedropper tool. Um, what else do we need to look at? We need to look at our actual image size and canvas size. Um, this is somewhat associated with layers. So let's create a quick smart object. Uh, so this one is already a smart up object item 3 so we're going to go in and edit contents it's going to complain about it and um, let's say for instance we accidentally created this and we don't want um, web well, let's, let's say we don't want this in here anymore um, I can uh, adjust our canvas size and to do that we're going to hit control alt C um, or you can also go to I believe it's image canvas size um, and so what we can do in here is actually adjust the uh, canvas around our element. So I'm going to change it the height exactly to the width. Click OK. It's going to uh, eliminate the text. The text is still there. It's just not visible. Um, and so this you'll want to do this. Um, say for instance you have a large drop shadow, or um, you want to expand your workspace. And so let's let's see if we can get back to that. Oh, I didn't hit the anchors right, and so, um, let's see, increase it by 300. And so, um, you can change your canvas size that way. Um, let's say you're provided a, um, a, a retina image. Let's, a retina image is typically twice the size of what it would uh, render on a regular screen, and it's for typically for mobile devices. Um, so it's 256 pixels and you need it half that size and so um, you can change the, your image size by hitting control alt i um, this is going to bring up uh, image size dialog um, and typically we only pay attention to the top two options of width and height there is um, a little lock um, on the right hand side of it and you can uh, constrain proportions um, and so what that does is that it locks it in place so that it's the same um, aspect ratio. And so, for instance, if it's constrained, I can change this to um, 600, or I'm sorry, the 600 um, by 372, 
or I can lower it to uh, 200 and it remains the same size. If I uncheck this and do 400, 400 it's going to skew the image real bad. Um, but if I uh, constrain proportions and do 600, it's going to keep every all the aspect ratios um, set up the way they should be. Um, and so like I said earlier, this is going to be useful um, if you're wanting to scale down an image. Now I wouldn't exactly recommend this for scaling up. Um, sometimes you'll lose, uh, images will start pixelating real bad. Um, and uh, it's not always the desired uh, effect. Alright, so what else do we have for uh, groups and layers? I think that's actually it. One last thing which is I would consider a little bit more of a um, nice to know. Um, I'm going to use my move tool and select our gear. I'm going to do the transform um, tool. If you press control T while having a layer selected, um, it's going to bring up this grid around it. Now it's going to let you rotate it or um, change the width. Um, I've done, I've used this before for creating a button. Um, uh, let's say you're expanding it out um, and need it wider and you don't know exactly how to do that inside of Photoshop uh, the appropriate way and so you just you can use the transform tool to kind of quickly uh, make something wider, taller, um, or rotate it even. Um, it's kind of one of those nice to haves but um, don't use it too terribly often. Um, so that wraps up everything uh, for working with layers. Um, it's primarily the, the features that uh, I found myself using quite a bit. Um, this final uh, video I'm, I'm going to consider the most important one. It's actually going to be saving images. Um, it's, it's never a very good thing to have um, three meg images on your, on your website. There's plenty of ways to actually save an image. Um, and it be optimized for the web. We're working for the web, we're not working for print or um, anything like that. And so we want nice slim images that, that um, render extremely fast. And so anyway, um, appreciate the view and we will see you on the next one.